It's 17 minutes past eight. Albert Finney, who's died at the age of 82, came to fame as one of the angry young men of the 1960s with his pioneering role in Saturday Night and Sunday Morning. Like his good friend Sir Tom Courtney, whom we'll hear from in a moment, Albert Finney was at the forefront of the working-class film and theatre revolution. Later on, the two men starred together in the 1983 film The Dresser, distributed by Columbia Pictures. It's the story of an ageing actor-manager. I became detached from myself. My thoughts flew and I was observing from a great height. Go on, you bastard, I seem to be saying or hearing. Go on, you more to give. Don't hold back more, more, more. And I was watching Lear. Each word he spoke was fresh invented. I had no knowledge of what came next, what fate awaited me. The agony was in the moment of acting created. I saw an old man and the old man was me. Outside myself. Albert Finney, we were joined now by his very close friend, Sir Tom Courtney. Good morning, and thank you for talking to us at this difficult time. Uh, n- not at all, not at all. Thank you. Now, listening to that extract must have brought back memories for you of the film, and it was during the filming of, of which that you did become so close, wasn't it? Y- yes, because uh, I'd been associated with him for years before. In fact, I first heard about him. In 1956, I was in a play at, the, at uh, UCL, uh, which is just down the street from RADA, and a RADA student came to see the play, and then after the performance, I had the temerity to ask him if he thought I, too, might be able to get into RADA. Uh, and he said, uh, oh, yes, you get in all right. He said, there's a, an extraordinary boy here at the moment, and... Uh, you have something in common with him. I don't know what it is, he said, but uh, you could be his younger brother. <laughs> and, what... and that was Albert. And what do you think <laughs> it was that you had in common? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. We were very different, but uh, something worked. You know, something about the two of us people seemed to enjoy. <clears throat> and then, of course, I did go to RADA, and then on leaving RADA, I was compared to Albert, and I was offered the next Woodfall film after Saturday night and Sunday morning, and I took over from Albert in Billy Liar. So <laughs> there he was, a huge part of my life. But we didn't become friends till we worked together on the film of The Dresser. And then it was, well, it was love, no question, <laughs> on both sides. And did you regret that you hadn't become such close friends earlier? Yeah, he said he'd missed a few laughs. <laughs> he, he used to find me funny, not that I was trying to be, he just thought I was a bit odd, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and you talked about those films, Saturday Night, Sunday Morning, and then the play of uh, Billy Liar. I mean, it, it was a, an exciting time, wasn't it? And Albert Finney was very much at the forefront of certain taboos being broken, I think, about acting. Uh, in the forefront of what, sorry? Of, of the, the way that people from different backgrounds became famous in the 1960s. Oh, in, see, all in... of a sudden, yes. <clears throat> the working, sort of, the new wave, working class movement. Well, it's all because of the 11 plus, and the, there we all were. There were writers uh, from the working classes and actors from the working classes. And um, that's what happened. And how important was Albert Finney in that, do you think? Well, massive. <laughs> massive. Um, I mean, he dominated it, really. He was the first one, the Saturday night and Sunday morning. And then after that, I came in with the runner, the loneliness of the long-distance runner. But he was uh, he was such a massive figure. I was terribly in awe of him at the time. And years later, when we were friends, I, having dinner, I'd say, uh, you know, I used to be in awe of him. And he loved to say... He still is. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a sense there of, of his his own mischievousness, wasn't it? A sense of mischief and a, a, quite a rebellious spirit as well. I mean, he wouldn't go to the Oscars. He refused a knighthood. No. Yes, he did, but it, it, it wasn't straightforward because <clears throat> when I told him, when he found I was accepting mine, he didn't deride me. In fact, he took us after the ceremony. He took uh, my sister and brother-in-law and Elizabeth, my wife, uh, to lunch at uh, the Ritz. So it, it, was, it just wasn't for him. I mean, I, I just said I wanted it, to do it because in honour of my father, who worked on the fish dock in Hull. And I thought that was a, quite a stretch. It and is... he respected that. 
and clearly a very charismatic man. And just looking, I was looking at his, oh, his very, love yeah. life. I mean, he called, called himself a born <laughs> flirt. But you look through some of it. Joan Byers, Carly Simon, Billy Whitelaw, quite the ladies' oh. man. <laughs> Yes, he well, he, he was. I mean, and also you didn't need any tricks as an actor. I mean, there are plenty who, you know, learn a whole bunch of tricks so that the audience uh, will look at them. But he didn't have to. I mean, he just brought on, came on with a bit of sunshine and people looked at him. The, the description of him I'm fondest of is something that Alec Guinness said to me a million years ago. He said, Al Albert, he said, he's like a shiny English apple. And <laughs> not a very accurate description, but I like the feel of it. When was it that you last saw him? It was about four weeks ago. We'd arranged to go to um, India, which we did and was wonderful. And I w went to the hospital just to see him before we went. And then Penny said, well, look, this is it, because they're not giving me any more treatment. So, wow. So... I went out and saw him in his room and uh, knew it was to say goodbye, and he knew it was to say goodbye too, so it wasn't easy. Uh, but his voice, he, he couldn't move very well, but his voice was still powerful, and he was tired, but he was with it, and um, so we, you know, I kissed him on the forehead, and we, we didn't know what to say, not much to say, really. And the last thing he said to me was, um, have a good time in India. Sir Tom Courtney, remembering his very close friend, Albert Finney, many thanks. Thank you.